Hi everyone, this is Joey from Force Screen Robotics. I want to make a quick little video about how we used encoders and dead wheels for odometry on our FTC robot. We used it for Roadrunner during autonomous period so we can accurately track the position of our robot, but it seems like it's that time of year again when Rev can't keep their products in stock, so if you want to use the Rev through bore encoders, you're out of luck. And the same thing happened to us last year. So we uh, went with the US Digital S4T encoders, uh, but they don't document that process very well. So we had to figure out how to integrate those with the Rev control system. So I'm gonna make a video so nobody else has to figure that out on their own as well. So really all you have to do, like you see in this video, is just uh, cut the two wires, strip them, put on heat shrink, and then solder them back together. And then you got a wire that you, you're right to use and you just plug in. No offense to US Digital, but they didn't really make this easy. So I'll let you know what we did. Uh, if you scroll down on the right side, they want you to configure your product, which is I guess kind of handy so you can get something really suited to your needs. But this is an FTC robot, so it doesn't have to be super specific the first thing is cpr which i'm still trying to figure out if that stands for counts per revolution cycles per revolution or cardiopulmonary resuscitation uh, but i think that's the number of signals you get uh, for each revolution and I, honestly i just went with 360 because that's the number of degrees in a circle it depends on the manufacturer sometimes it might be four times that if they're using like counts per revolution which is different than cycles per revolution I don't know, but we used 360 and it worked. Uh, for shaft diameter, this is whatever you want. Uh, but personally, we went with six millimeters since the um, Tetrix uh, motor shaft hubs also are six millimeters. So we just use those to mount something directly to the encoder shaft. Uh, output, I don't honestly understand what either of those mean, but I did a little bit of Googling and we used single ended and it worked. Uh, for torque, you're going to want a ball bearing. That will make it a tiny bit more expensive, but that's going to offer the least resistance so you're not uh, creating any drag when your robot's driving around. It uh, probably wouldn't matter that much, but it's just kind of nice to have that. And then we use two, one in the x-axis and one on the y-axis for the dead wheels. Uh, I know a lot of teams will use three, so you might want to do three and they are a little more expensive uh, than the rev encoders but you know if there's i can't really find any other options so you know what are you going to do and uh again you can't like i said they didn't make this easy so you can't just order them right on the website you gotta like email their sales team and then they'll like take it from there but on they were pretty good i emailed them and they responded i was like yeah, I'll buy those, and they're like, cool. Uh, they also don't come with the cable. I made that mistake, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you buy the cable while we're here. Uh, you wanna get the aptly named CA-MIC4-W4-NC cable. Uh, that will plug into your encoder. Uh, you can buy a 200 foot long one for some reason. Uh, but we only went with half a foot since it doesn't have to be that long. And that's the wire that we just uh, soldered into the other encoder wire that we cut in half earlier. I'll just give a really quick tour of our dead wheel modules. So you can see here the specific wheel that we're using is the Andy Mark 2 inch Omni wheel. And you have to use Omni wheels in your dead wheels. So no matter the robot's going forward, sideways, that robot can, or sorry, that wheel can always be rolling and it's not dragging if you're moving. It's like perpendicular to that way the wheel is facing. And to connect the wheel to the encoder, we use 3D printed gears. I'm sure you could connect the encoder directly to the same shaft that the wheel is mounted on. However, that wouldn't fit in our chassis setup we had. So we came up with this arrangement and that's worked uh, pretty well for us so far, so no problems there. 
And if you've done any research on dead wheels, you've probably found it's a really good idea to have them spring tensioned. And that way, if you run over any obstacles or for some reason one side of your robot gets lifted up a little bit, there are inconsistencies in the field on you drive over a ground junction, the wheel is always touching the ground. So that way you're always getting readings for how far your robot's moving. It wouldn't be a very good idea if you were skipping readings and your robot would get all out of alignment. The way we do that is that this whole module is free to rotate about these two axes right here. So we have one very long screw that goes through here, one very long screw that goes through here. And the whole thing can rotate. And if it drives over something, it'll rotate around here. That will compress the spring. And this just rotates to keep the uh, this part and this part parallel. And another good thing is we used a screw here. And you can tighten or loosen that screw to adjust the tension in the spring. I'm not sure where the spring came from since we've had it just kind of lying around for several years just sitting in a box on a shelf, uh, but it worked well. So it fits over an M3 screw. I'm sure you might be able to use certain kinds of pen springs. I'm honestly not sure if those will fit with the screw we're using, but it would be worth a try. You know, McMaster car also has lots of good springs. It's not super stiff. Like I said, it's about uh, about like a pen spring, so it's probably uh, around the range of one pound uh, one pound per inch of compression. Uh, if you're trying to look for those on McMaster.com, and we also used uh, to hold it together some Tetric standoffs, uh, some 632 screws, six millimeter bearings, six millimeter shafts. We ordered the wheel with a hexagonal bore, so we have a 3D printed hexagonal insert uh, that screws onto the shaft hub and that uh, locks the motor or locks the wheel onto the shaft. Well, thank you for watching everyone. Hopefully this was able to help some people. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and I will post all of the uh, resources that we used in the description.